today on ABC's Wide World of Sports. His nickname is the Dark Destroyer. He's Englishman Nigel Benn, the WBC Super Middleweight Champion. Today, live from London, he defends his title for the third time. It's the fear of losing my title. That's what, you know, that's what I fight. Pound for pound, he's one of the hardest punchers in boxing. Don't let him get confident. Crack him with a right hand, and that slows him down every time. His opponent is fellow Brit Lou Gent. Oh. Now we're going to box and push Nigel back. We're going to hit Nigel so many times he's not going to know what's happening. He's not even going to know where they're coming from. It's Ben versus Jen as the Quaker State Professional Boxing Series returns. Figure skating's best return in special encore performances. Brian Boitano. Paul Wiley. And Christy Yamaguchi. Star in the Durasoft Colors World Challenge of Champions. Please, baby, baby. Then it's whitewater rafting as veteran Washington Redskin, but first time rafter. No! Charles Mann tackles the Tuolumne River outside Yosemite Park. Come on board for a spectacular ride as we twist and turn through treacherous rapids and past perilous waterfalls. Spanning the globe to bring you the constant variety of sport. The thrill of victory. Agony of defeat. The human drama of athletic competition. This is ABC's Wide World of Sports. The beautiful River Thames, bounded by all its history and majesty, the famous Big Ben of the Palace of Westminster, and the Royal Coaches gliding by Buckingham Palace, all landmarks of what is London, England. But London is more. The suburb of West Ham, home of, the, home of the champion West Ham United Football Club. A lot of beautiful and tranquil parks and home to Nigel Benn, the WBC super middleweight champion. Now in the south of London is Streatham, a suburban working class community of 30,000 people. Its central landmark is St. Leonard's Church. This dates back to the 10th century. Streatham is also home to the challenger, Lou Gent, who tonight is in his first ever world title fight. And today we're in Kensington, yet another suburb of London, and we are here at the National Hall. And we are inside for the continuation of our Quaker State Professional Boxing Series. Tonight, a WBC super middleweight title bout between Nigel Benn and Lou Gent. Hi, everybody. I'm Dan Deardorff, and greetings from London. I hope you're having a pleasant afternoon back home. We've already had ours here as it's now a little past 9.30 in the evening across the pond. Now, when our Quaker State Boxing Series was in Lake Tahoe last month for an Oscar De La Hoya fight, we promoted that for today we would have a light heavyweight bout between Jeff Harding and Mike McCallum. Now, that fight was canceled, and we feel extremely fortunate to have booked Nigel Benn's title defense. Now, Benn is no stranger to American boxing or really to our ABC audience. We had Nigel on back-to-back -back appearances in 1990 against quality opponents. First was this, this eighth-round TKO, then the WBO champ, Doug DeWitt. Four months later, Nigel followed that up with this one-round destruction of the blade, Aran Barkley. Now, both of those fights were in the middleweight division. Nigel is now a super middleweight. That's an eight-pound increase all the way up to 168 pounds. And this is truly one of boxing's best divisions. It's loaded with talent, beginning with this man, the hard-hitting James Tony, who's the IBF champion. The smooth Michael Nunn holds forth over in the WBA, and the WBC champion is the Dark Destroyer, Nigel Benn, who puts that title on the line here this evening against crosstown rival Lou Chen. All right, as always, my partner at ringside is ABC's boxing guru, Alex Wallow. And Alex, We've seen Nigel before, and while he's one of boxing's more unpredictable fighters, there's no doubt about him being one of the most exciting fighters to come out of Britain in a long, long time. Dan, Nigel Benn is a man capable of tremendously explosive performances. He has been rightfully ranked as one of the sport's premier punchers since that one-round knockout of Aram Barkley we just saw. But like so many men who are blessed with punching power, he is not blessed with a great ability to take a punch. And that's another thing that makes his fights so exciting. Anything can happen. 
At age 29, Nigel Bent is still marketable because of that power, but at this stage, he cannot afford any missteps, especially since he's scheduled to meet his British arch rival, the WBO super middleweight champion, Chris Eubanks, in October for a reported $1.5 million payday. The popular challenger, Lou Jen, has been a bit player in British boxing, who is stepping on the center stage tonight. He has a very deceptive record because most of his losses, there you see him coming into the ring, most of those losses came, believe it or not, as a cruiserweight, the 190-pound division. Since he's dedicated himself to boxing, Lou has dropped 20 pounds and come down two weight divisions. The crowd reacts to the, their favorite. He is a very honest professional, very game. Even Nigel Benn says that Lou reminds him of Rocky. I am very surprised about how much noise there's been about the possibility of an upset in this fight. A significant group of the British press are picking Lou Jen to upset the four to one odds against him. Primarily because against super middleweight opponents, Nigel Benn's punch, excuse me, has not landed with the same authority. If the challenger you see there, Lou Jen, can avoid Nigel Benn's punches early, if he avoids the cuts, which have haunted him throughout his career, if he doesn't freeze in his first world title fight, he could provide a rocky type ending. But Dan, that is an awful lot of ifs. In any event, these are two men who have always demonstrated a burning desire to win, and it should be a very solid action fight as long as it lasts. It's fun to be here at ringside. Jets in the ring, we're waiting for Ben. Title fight coming up. Getting into shape, that's good. Getting into athlete's foot, that's not. Especially a really tough case. The irritating itch, the painful cracking, the burning. That's when you want a medicine that acts tough. Tough actin, tenactin. Tenactin cures even the tough cases of athlete's foot fungus. And tenactin is clinically proven. No wonder it's the antifungal most recommended by pharmacists. Got a tough case of athlete's foot? Get the medicine that acts tough. Tough actin, tenactin. Any deodorant will do if you're at a standstill. But movers and shakers need the 24-hour power of Speed Stick Antiperspirant. It's 110% protection against wetness and odor. 110% protection for movers and shakers. Speed Stick. Red Devil Enamel. You can always count on its durable finish. Harder than ordinary paints, its beauty lasts and lasts. Red Devil Enamel. For the finish of a lifetime. ABC's Wine World of Sports is brought to you by Quaker State. The Big Q is one tough motor oil. By Fruit of the Loom. Close for the best of your life. And by Calcium Rich Tums. Tums helps wipe out heartburn and gives you calcium. The sound effect chimes of Big Bend are playing here in National Hall. And this crowd is awaiting the arrival of the champion. We were led to believe, Alex, that this crowd would, even though Nigel Bend is the champion, would more or less be in favor of the challenger, Lou Jet. This is a South London versus East London match. Ben from East London, Jet from the south of town. And here he comes, Nigel Bend. comes into the ring, Dan, just like the man he idolizes, Mike Tyson, did. He used to fight like a mini Mike Tyson, all power punches with both hands, going out and throwing everything he had with every punch. When he moved up to world class, he scored 22 knockouts for that kind of style, but when he moved up to world class, the smarter fighters were able to wear, wait him out, avoid the power, and then test Ben's stamina into the late rounds, and that's the only way he's lost the two fights that he's lost. He has said that in this fight, after an experiment with pacing himself and fighting control boxing, he has said that the old Nigel Ben, the hell for leather Nigel Ben, is going to reappear in this fight. 
And we will well, see very shortly. He's planning on Lou Jen coming right after him. And I think it would be a surprise, Nigel Ben, if Lou Jen decides to box rather than brawl in the early going. Nigel Ben between the ropes and finally into the ring. Let's go ahead and take a look at the numbers for this fight while they get the referee's instructions. We'll check the tail of the tape. You see that Nigel Ben is one year older than Lou Gent. They both made weight, although it was a struggle for Gent. Relatively the same height and a little reach advantage to Nigel Ben. And Alex, it wasn't easy for Gent to make that 168 pounds. No, he had to weigh in, I think, three times, Dan, before he did make the weight over 40 minutes. But the thing that is the craziest is the fact that the weigh-in was yesterday. So more than 24 hours ago. So Lou Gent has had plenty of time to, to get himself back together physically, to rehydrate himself. In the old days, Dan, the, the, the weigh-in was always eight hours before the fight. But in this new era of boxing, it's one of the crazy things that's happened that you just don't get penalized when you come in and, and don't make the uh, championship uh, weight limit. All right, let's go up into the ring and get the uh, flavor of the introductions from ring announcer Alan Hughes. Introducing in the red corner with the maroon shorts, with 22 wins and two draws from 32 contests, 11 inside the distance from Stratton in South London, the reigning Shorts with 36 wins from 38 contests, 31 inside the distance from West Ham in East London, the reigning WBC Super Middleweight Champion of the World, Nigel the Dark Destroyer Bill. All right, this fight Ladies will be governed by the, the WBC today. rules. Scoring is on the 10-point must system. The three knockdown rule and the standing eight are not in effect. A fighter, a fighter cannot be saved by the bell except in the final round, and the doctor can't stop the fight. Only the referee has that authority. And our referee for the bout is Larry O'Connell from England. And our three judges, Mickey Van from England, Adrian Morgan from Wales, and Bill Rafferty from Scotland. All right, Alex, uh, the fighters are going to get their final instructions from referee Larry O'Connell. Uh, how do you see this thing unfolding early? Well, Dan, we said that uh, Nigel's going to come out and fight all out again. He thinks that Lou Jen is tailor-made because he comes to fight. He's not one of those moving boxers who've given him trouble in the past. One thing to look for, Dan, Nigel has become less of a headhunter and a Betty better body puncher, and Lou Jen has been very vulnerable to the body. And here we go. Anything can happen. This might last 30 seconds or 12 rounds. It's scheduled for a dozen. Not many people give it a chance of going the distance. From Lou Gent's point of view, we talked about Nigel's strategy. Lou Gent must give Nigel Ben respect, but not so much respect that he doesn't let his hands go. He's got to use that jab. He shot right there. He missed with it. Use that jab to keep Nigel out of range. There's the good body punch there with the left hand by Nigel Ben. So and Lou Gent should use some boxing skill and, and his courage, really, his resiliency to frustrate the champion and then go into the later rounds where he can test his stamina and test his chin. Always tremendous atmosphere at a British fight. Oh, there was a good right hand by Nigel Benn that caught the chin of Lou Jett. It didn't stagger him by any means, but it definitely got over the left hand of Jett and, caught, and got in there, and you've seen Jett come up short with his right hand. He's been six inches short with the ones he's thrown. Again, does no damage. You see Lou all tucked in. I mean, he looks with the with the tattoos all over him, and you know, just like he's just going to be a hard guy and come out and try to knock your head off. But he has boxing skill. He has the ability to put punches together. He's got a, a decent jab, and he's got some defensive skill as well. Hands tucked in well there. But Alex, there's no way that a Lou Gent in this environment, taking a huge step up in class like he's doing now, there's no way he can't be tight. He wouldn't be human if he wasn't a little tight. He's pretty dry. 
He had to wait in the ring quite a while while Nigel Benn made his entrance, and Lou Jet does not give the appearance, at least early on, of a very warmed-up fighter. Well, you see the rabbit punch from Nigel. He's allowed to get away with that a lot. Um, and, and Larry O'Connell, we should note, the referee is not a referee that's quick to separate the fighters when they're in a clinch. There you see Nigel using some of the defensive skill, but, but, but Lou Jett kept throwing. And they're both men. He kept throwing, punches. Alex, but I'm not, not, I'm not sure one of them did any damage yeah, one, at all. One right hand did, Dan. One right hand when Nigel was bobbing down. a solid right hand. It just <laughs> missed. I think it hit on the shoulder. It landed on the shoulder, but boy, did that have some pop behind it. If that had been on the head, we might have had Nigel Bent down. And a solid combination by Nigel Bent. And good His body best work. of the fight. And good body work mixed in. We're coming to the end of round number one from London, England. Burt Reynolds talks with the Quaker State team. Hold on. I got to get my name on the car. My fans are getting restless. No room. How about on the big Q? The big Q stands alone. It stands for quality. You can't get better protection. No other oil beats Quaker State. How about right here? No way. Red doesn't like to be crowded. My fans are getting demanding. All right. We'll go get the painter. <laughs> I must have had a hard time finding the painter. Nothing beats Quaker State. It's one tough motor oil. Riddick Bowe may be heavyweight champion of the world, but some days he takes a lot of hits to the stomach. That's when a little extra comfort means a lot. Here, Daddy. Thanks, Junior. Fruit of the Loom's Comfort Loom waistband gives him a cushion of comfort so soft and gentle on the skin, he can barely feel it. Feel better now, Daddy? Much better than the other guy, Junior. The Comfort Loom waistband from Fruit of the Loom. Clothes for the best of your life. Here's the action at the start of round number two. Lou Gent there in the red shorts on your left. Nigel Ben in the black. And while Ben had a strong combination in the last 30 seconds, Lou Jett finished with a good combination of his own inside the last five seconds of round number one. Not a lot of backpedaling in this fight. That last right hand landed on the right shoulder of Nigel Ben. Ooh, two good lefts by Ben, and again, good work to the body. O'Connell steps in after punches are thrown and breaks the fighters. And Lou Jen throws a half-hearted uppercut on the break. You see Lou there shake his both arms. That's the sign of a guy who's tight. As Dan pointed out, he would not be human if he did not come in here. His first time in the world stage, a huge step up in class. Yes. And his hand speed isn't causing much of a problem for Ben. His punches are coming up short because with minimal effort, Ben's able to move out of the way. There's the jab that Lou Jen has to find Nigel Ben with to keep him away, to keep him out of range. Again, you see how the fighters, even though one arm is tied up, continue to hit each other. Ooh, Ben is dangerous on the inside there, but so is Lou Jen. Look at Lou. Lou Jen winning the crowd with that wild flurry. Nigel I'm not ben, sure it did any damage, but it, it looked good. Nigel Ben, it, we should point out, Dan, is very dangerous when he's on the ropes like that. He can attack lethally, bouncing off the ropes. Well, he's one of those guys that just can automatically end the fight with one good right hand to the chin. You might get up, but the fight is over. Lou Jett can't uh, run the risk of, of putting on a show for the crowd and exposing himself. Good, solid work by Nigel Ben. And this is some of the best work we've seen by Ben in the fights we've done, Alex, of him going to the body, being patient, working the body. He has tried to learn to pace himself better. And he is picking his shots better here, but he's doing it in a way, Dan, that 
that has not happened in some of his less impressive performances recently. He's won all his recent fights, but this time he's, he's letting his hands go a little bit better, a little bit more fluid and putting punches together a little bit better. And that's because Lu Jen is not a runner. As Nigel pointed out, he comes to fight and that's the way I like him. Here's the end of the second. You're not taking a break, are you? No break. <laughs> oh, you smell good. Well, thank you. You're wearing something? Just my deodorant. Oh, that Swap Super Stick I got you. Yeah. You like the Swap, huh? Yeah. Good. It costs less than your other one. Yeah, well, I think it works really well. Mm. Don't you think so? Mm. You're supposed to be paying attention to me right now. <laughs> How many women tell their husbands they smell good while they're cleaning out the garage? Just one. That's right. Yeah. Super Stick. When Swab works this well, why spend more? Evander Holyfield wants his title back. First, Holyfield has to beat the destroyer, Alex Stewart. Vinny Pacienza broke his neck. They said he would never fight again. Pass beat the broken neck. Can he survive? Two-time world champion Lloyd Hunnigan. Live from Atlantic City, only the strong survive. with lefts and rights to the body. Lu Jen hasn't not, even thrown a punch yet this round. That's right, he's trying to cover, trying to weather the storm. Oh, and a solid shot from Nigel Ben. A left hook, yep. Right hand and left hook behind it. An excellent combination, Jen is up. With almost two and a half minutes left in round number three. Now can Lu Jen be smart? He has not grabbed on yet. Nor has he thrown a punch. That last uppercut split his gloves. And there was another good short left that caught the face of Jet. And this crowd is going berserk. And Jet scored a good right hand by Jet. And he's hurt. Ben is hurt. Another good right hand by Jet. What a comeback by Lou Jet. And Jet takes the clinch. We pointed out that this is a man who busts up badly. The crowd here can hardly believe the Lou Jim not only is in town, but is fighting back and hurting Ben. <laughs> Nigel Ben not so quick to press the attack. that Jen has to be careful. That right hand by Jen got in. Look at this. Look at this. 45 seconds left. We want to tell our stations that if these two guys are still up, we're going to stay here between rounds. No commercials. We'll stay in London. Good inside uppercut by Luke Jen. And Nigel Ben just wins. But there was a case where Lou Jet went down, and you could see that he was, had his wits about him, and the bell sounded, and it's good in this case that there isn't a three knockdown rule. The referee has the discretion. There's the first knockdown, a right, and then a left behind it by Nigel Ben, and Lou Jet went down flat. Second knockdown. 
Lujak coming in, trying to jab his way in, but Nigel Benn came up from his shoe tops with a left hook, then a right hand, and the left again, the third punch, put him down. Again, he was flat, and again, he battled his way to his feet. Now, a historical point. Lou Jen has been down three times before and come back to fight in a draw when he fought Henry Wharton for the Commonwealth 168 pound title. Lou Jen is no stranger to being on the canvas. Here's the start of the fourth round. But then again, Henry Wharton is not Nigel Benn. And Nigel Benn with a body shot to the ribs has hurt Lou Jen. He goes down. O'Connell sends Benn to the neutral corner. And that was good by work that sent oh, Jet down. I didn't see an eight count there. I didn't see a mandatory eight. There, that's because there was a one. That's it. The fight's over. O'Connell stops the fight, but you're right, Alex. He didn't have a mandatory eight count. Well, you know something? He deserves one. I mean, he should have a chance. What a superb effort by Nigel Benn in victory. A game effort by Lou Jen in defeat, and the third round will go down as one of the most exciting rounds I have seen in a long, long time. It sounds awfully one-sided, a round in which one man was down three times, Dan, but it actually was a round in which it looked like Nigel Benn could have gone down a couple of times. You see the two men there, the fighters hugging. Lou Jen had his day, and he acquitted himself, believe it or not, even though he was knocked down five times, he showed all the guts and determination. This is round four, and there, Lou Jen going down on the right hand by Nigel Benn didn't help him. Uppercut tried by Nigel Benn here. This is after Lou got up. Lou trying to survive. That's and a that, body shot. Yeah, that's the right hand that put him over. We should point that out, Dan, that at no time did uh, Lou Jen try to clinch, which he obviously should have. That Here's was the fifth, with him in the, ring. the fifth knockdown of the fight by Nigel Benn and will return with more boxing after this word from our ABC stations. Still to come, special performances from the World Challenge of Champions. And Charles Mann of the Washington Redskins goes whitewater rafting. Have you had a pleasant stay in Vietnam? The issue that won't go away. I want to be released. The wound that won't heal. No matter what, one of us is going to make it back. Ralph Macchio, Martin Sheen, The Last POW, The Bobby Garwood Story, Monday. Parental discretion advised. No, there's no excuse not to drive that new car you've always wanted. Detroit Car Vault, Pontiac Nissan's inventory disposal sale. Everything must go. Over 400 cars and trucks. All marked for final disposal. This is your last chance for great savings. $1,000 is all you need. To drive a new 93 Nissan Sentra. Loaded with factory air, cruise control, airbag, and more. $149 a month for 24 months. That's right, $149 a month. Tax included. This is a dream come true. But hurry, this dream ends soon. This is the final week. This incredible pricing. Only at Car Vault, Pontiac Nissan. Hiawatha Boulevard. One mile west of Carousel Mall, Syracuse. Remember, our network buying power saves you money. I would have. I should have. I could have. I should have. I would have. I could have. I should have. Hey, stop the udavs. Take control. Valleys. Five dollars to start now. All hours, all days. Call 1-800-688-8888. Now. Class of 93 looks to the future. That story at 6. We are back here at National Hall in London where Nigel Benn has won on a fourth round TKO. And we'll have an interview with Nigel Benn later in the show. We'll also be back with a, a whole look at the, taking a look again at the knockdowns that precluded his victory. Plus, don't forget, we'll have the World Challenge of Champions figure skating coming up later in ABC's Wide World of Sports. So stay with us. We've got a lot more sports coming your way, and we'll be back here to London in a moment. No matter how uncomfortable life may get, with ribbed whites from Fruit of the Loom, at least your underwear will be comfortable. Linda, will you? They don't just look good. They're made to hug your body. Linda? to move with you. Some things 
are bound to make you uncomfortable. With ribbed whites, Linda. your underwear will never be one of them. Ribbed whites from Fruit of the Loom. Clothes for the best of your life. Marry me. Burt Reynolds for Quaker State. The big Q stands for quality. Always has, always will. You know, when it comes to protecting against friction, nothing beats Quaker State. When it comes to protecting against viscosity breakdown, nothing beats Quaker State. When it comes to keeping engines clean, nothing beats Quaker State. Take it from me, for unbeatable protection, nothing beats Quaker State. It's one tough motor oil. It was my first serious dinner at his family's. So much food. <laughs> this is Greg's favorite dish. Oh, <laughs> and my first serious heartburn. Excuse me. And I learned some things. Oh, no, these are different. Tums has calcium. Most antacids don't. Of all these, the only one that helps wipe out heartburn and gives you calcium you need every day is Tums. Something my body needs anyway. I like that. Calcium-rich Tums. When life turns up the heat... They start the wedding without me? This shouldn't take long, honey. Nothing protects you like Degree Antiperspirant. It's body heat activated to release extra protection. Degree, your body <laughs> heat it. turns it on. I, it. <laughs> I used pressure-treated lumber, and I still have $800 in water damage. How come? Even treated wood needs Thompson's Water Seal Waterproofer. Without Thompson's, you're wide open for water damage. Thompson's, don't wait until it's too late. Welcome back here to National Hall in London. It's chaos at ringside as the celebration continues of Nigel Benz. Fourth round TKO over Lou Gent. He's being interviewed right now on British television. And a reminder that we'll be back later in the show uh, and interview Nigel. We'll take a look at the, the various knockdowns. Quite a performance, and it was fun while it lasted. And also a reminder that we'll have a look at Charles Mann doing a little white water rafting later in the show. But up next on Wide World of Sports, it's an encore presentation of the Durasuft Collars World Challenge of Champions. Now our host in Los Angeles for these special figure skating performances is Julie Moran. Y'all ready for this? everyone, I'm Julie Moran, and you know the thing that I love most about L.A. is that anything can happen. You can experience everything from a flash flood in Mexico... Oh, my gosh. ...or climb to the top of a snowy mountain range. In a moment's time, you can take a leisurely walk through the neighborhoods of New York City. Or travel back in time to the wild, wild west. The only limit here is your own imagination. Imagination. Los Angeles is known as the entertainment capital of the world, but it's also known for its spectacular sports tradition. So it's no surprise that California has been a mecca for great skaters. Peggy Fleming, Brian Boitano, Christy Yamaguchi, just to name a few. So today, sit back and relax as the world's best skaters, including all the 92 gold medalists, entertain you. It's a different kind of magic coming your way from the Great Western Forum. Hi, I'm Viktor Petrenka, and I'm going to skate at least again at this exhibition. And uh, I'm sure all people, it doesn't matter what kind of age, like this kind of music.
Petrenko. Burt Reynolds talks with the Quaker State team. It's everywhere you want to be. Welcome back here to National Hall in London, England. Alex Wallow and Dan Deardorff with you. And Alex, uh, we saw Nigel Benn for the third time. All his fights have ended the same way the ones that we have seen. And this was fun. I want to remind everybody that we're going to have more skating coming up later in the programming. But this was fun. There's something about being ringside at a Nigel Benn fight that is just plain exhilarating. Especially when the opponent comes to fight and Lou Jen came to fight. There were two rounds, the first and second round, Nigel Benn uh, won on points on all scorecards. But here in round three, that right hand over a lazy Lou Gent jab and down with Lou Gent and he's flat there as you can see. And it really was a question, Dan, whether he would get up at all even the first time he was knocked down. But as you see, he did. He took the mandatory eight count. Larry O'Connell waved him in, and you'll see in a moment uh, testimony to Lou Gents, perhaps not his strategic intelligence, because he never grabbed Nigel Benn, not once. He stood there, but to his courage. He takes a right hand bailing out, but then scores an inside left hand there and, and comes back in punching. Nigel Benn's trying to duck out of the way, but there, that right uppercut, and again, the right uppercut. And Lou Gent actually had Nigel Benn, another right uppercut, hurt a number of times in round three, but Nigel stood his ground and came back himself. There, ducking under and coming up with a big left hook and a right hand behind it, and then, for good measure, another left, which put Lou Gent down for the second time in the round. Now, he went down one more time. Now, let's go forward to the fourth round. Lou Gent has already been down once in the fourth round, and there, that right to the body, he went over for the fifth time in the fight, and referee Larry O'Connell had seen enough and stopped the fight, and Nigel Benn was a winner. Well, we talked earlier about the chance that uh, it didn't exist that this fight would go the distance. So no surprise that Ben wins with a KO and Alex had a chance to visit with him a few minutes ago at ringside. Nigel, you said coming in would be a war. You said you wanted a war to reestablish yourself and you got one. Yeah, everyone thought like, you know, that I was, because for the last couple of fights, I've just been boxing in like, this time, you know, this is what I do best. I like to have a war and um, I knew it would pay off because I knew he was going to come and have a fight with me, and I know he's gonna come second best, you know? His tactics seem to play right in your hands, now. Just standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with you just looks suicidal. Well, that, that's it, I knew he was gonna wing him in, I was gonna wing him in, so I thought to myself, I knew for a fact that I would catch him before he catches me. How important were the body punches? Oh, yeah, when we was in the clinches, I was whacking into the body, I can hear him going, uh, uh, you know, deep, deep breathing and all that, and I knew I had him, it was just a matter of time, instead of rushing out there, throwing punches, I thought, take my time and slam down. And when the chance come, that was it. Nigel, what is the future from you? There's been reports that you're going to fight your British arch rival, the WBO super middleweight champion, Chris Eubanks. The American public doesn't know Chris Eubanks, but you you fought him once before. This well, would be a rematch. Me. He beat you. And he beat me. Are you going to fight him? Yeah, of course I am. Uh, I'd like to, you know, fight him, whip his butt, and then go and fight James Tony. That's 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 my dreams. You know, beat Eubanks and then go and fight James Tony. Congratulations to you, Nigel, on a Thank sensational performance. Skating later in the program, but after this commercial break, an unusual look at Charles Mann doing some whitewater rafting. Still to come on Wide World of Sports, Charles Mann of the Washington Redskins goes whitewater rafting. If you want to save money on Tums. For those of you who like thrills and adventure, I guarantee you'll like this. I can tell you from experience that NFL linemen are, well, a tough breed. They love challenges. Well, we asked Charles Mann of the Washington Redskins to join us on a rafting expedition on the Tulamaine River outside Yosemite National Park. And as you'll see, this was like any trench war he'd ever been in before. We are on the wild and scenic Bank turns of Talladega. The International Race of Champions continues Sunday on ABC Sports. Hi, I'm Christy Amaguchi. In today's exhibition, I'm skating to My Lovin' by In Vogue. It's a fun number for me. I can let loose and just enjoy it, so I hope you do too.
Christy Yamaguchi getting a warm reception from her home state in her first Christy year of Yamaguchi. skating professionally. A fitting close for today's show from the Great Western Forum. We hope you enjoyed the Durasoft Colors World Challenge of Champions. Dan Deardorff, Alex Wallow back here in London to wrap things up. Though first I want to remind you that tonight, two hours of police action on ABC. It begins with the FBI, the untold stories, and American detective. Then a cop is involved with a hostage, and Tony's caught in the middle on the commish. All tonight, coming up on ABC. Okay, Alex, uh, we've had the privilege of sitting ringside at some good fights. This ranks right up there near the top. A lot of fun in a few short rounds. A lot of knockdowns, five <laughs> knockdowns in three-plus rounds, Dan. Let's look at the first one of them. And this is a picture-perfect case of why you don't throw a lazy jab. Boom. Lou Gent, the challenger, on the red trunks, on the deck after laying his jab out. He was on the deck twice more around three. Fought back bravely, actually had the champion, Nigel Benn, in trouble a couple of times. Here's the fourth round. Lou Gent has already been down once in this round. Nigel Benn is really moving into the kill. He misses a lot of punches here, trying to finish him. Misses an uppercut, only cuffs him with the right hand. Ricochets a left hand, but that right shot to the left side of Lou Gent put him down, and the referee had seen enough and stopped the fight. Uh, Nigel Benn looked good, but we must point out, Dan, in all fairness, this challenger fought precisely the kind of fight that played into Nigel's hands. He stood there and traded toe-to-toe, -to -toe, and not many men could do that with Nigel Benn. Fun year, Alex. We want to thank our friends at Quaker State, and we hope that you enjoyed the boxing, the rafting, and the skating. For Alex, I'm Dan Eardorff. So long from London, everybody. Thanks.